Welcome back everyone. Well, like you guys, I'm here stuck at home during the COVID isolation, but I want to cheer you guys up today. I want to introduce you guys to the newest member of the Wild Yam community. Let's take a peek. There's the man of the hour. There he is. His name is Royce. He is a 10 week old Bouvier de Flandre. So we're just out right now on the deck hanging out. We've had a busy morning. I want to take you through sort of what our daily routine is like. He's going to be my newest outdoor woodland companion. I think he's going to be a great dog. I picked him up a week ago and he was a real sweetie from day one. The breeder did a lot of work with him. He's been well socialized with his brothers and sisters and adult dogs as well that live with him in the household. So he's an incredibly chill dog. He loves his playtime. Of course he gets his zoomies and his silly times as well. But it's just awesome getting to know him. Some of you guys may be wondering how big he's going to get. <laughs> Hello. Well, he's going to get up to about 100 pounds. His dad was around 100, possibly more, at about 20, I think 26 inches at the height of the shoulder. His mom was a lot shorter. I think she was more like 24, 25 inches at the shoulder, and she was probably about 80 pounds. So he's a big boy. He's going to look like a black bear when he's all done growing. So if you guys remember from the photo that I showed in a previous video, he was a little guy that was sitting in his food dish. And yes, he adores his food. I use a lot of it uh, <laughs> for training. And he already knows how to sit. And we're learning lay down. And we're learning heel. He'll be going into professional training uh, hopefully in a month if this COVID thing settles down. Ontario is opening up a few more businesses uh, May the 4th. So we'll see. This is going to be all like, you know, in a class outdoors, so I don't really see a very small number of people in the class anyway. Some of you guys may be wondering how it's going with Rito the cat and the new dog. Well, my little puppy do was raised with three cats. So uh, one was an older cat and a couple were younger. So he's super used to cats uh, and his prey drive is actually not super high. The dog, uh, it's a little moderate, but he respects cats. Um, so these guys have been getting to know each other. This guy's got a lot of safe spaces to be. He can get up high to get away from him. He has his own room. Um, getting a baby gate with a cat door in it so that he can get in there and, you know, just use his litter without the dog, you know, eating his poop and stuff like that. So uh, they're getting along okay. Uh, he only swatted him one time when he got a little bit too close and a little bit too excitable. But uh, we're making sure both of them are transitioning well. And sometimes if food's involved, they both sit together. Look at that. See, food does bring people together and animals together. <laughs> There's a birthday parade going past my house. This is what COVID is like right now. Everyone's distance in their vehicle. Woo! <laughs> Let's take a look. Woo! <laughs> well, that was pretty fun. So let's get back uh, to what I was talking about. So yeah, so Royce, we've been doing a little bit of training. Uh, right now is a critical period of time. You know, he's 10 weeks old. So between basically eight and 16 weeks, you know, I'm gonna put in a lot of work. He's a little sponge. Um, this is a really smart breed of dog. They're intuitive, highly intelligent. They can be stubborn. So really important to start with the basics of manners, bite inhibition, uh, and of course having just lots of fun, having play time and doing a little bit of training while we're at it. Another key thing I'm doing right now is noise desensitization. So um, his breeder had him listening to cartoons ever since he was born. And if you guys know, cartoons can have a lot of startling noises in them. And I didn't realize that until I started playing you know, the Looney Tunes cartoons that I haven't heard in years and years and years. And there's whistles and bangs and gunshots and pots and pans and screaming and yelling. And so he really settles with the cartoons and it's making him really bomb proof um, when there's a startling noise in the neighborhood. So how do we socialize a dog during COVID-19? So I live in a neighborhood where there are a lot of uh, people and kids and pets and yeah, just lots of people. So it's awesome. What I do is I sit in a lawn chair and we sit maybe about, well, I'd say about eight to 10 feet away from the road at this point. And I let him watch people walk by, kids, kids on bikes, adults, senior citizens. Uh, he sees trucks, motorcycles, cars go by. And we sit out there about an hour long session, 
maybe two to three times a day, especially if he's outside for toileting. And I'd let people come and just talk to me. We don't get within six feet of each other. And certainly as dogs go by, he's not allowed to contact them because he's not fully, doesn't have all his shots up to date yet. He's only had one shot. So we just sit there and chat. And at first, you know, he would growl and he'd bark at people. I didn't like that. It's protective instinct, I get that, but I don't want him terrifying people as he goes by, as they, people go by my house. So basically what I do is I, you know, I very softly correct him and tell him, no, that's okay, that's just our neighbor. And uh, he responds well to that. And when he's calm and relaxed and doing what I want him to do, I give him a treat. So he's very food motivated, of course. So uh, he likes to do that and behave for me. So it's always a work in progress. There's times where he regresses and that's okay. We just continue to work on it. The other day I had to take him out to toilet him. Um, I was doing some, an errand in town. I had to pick up some trees for the property to plant and uh, he had to toilet. He let me know in the crate that he had to go out and he had to go out now. So we had to pull over into a shopping plaza. There's a bit of grass, took him to the washroom and then I had to walk him back to the car and he was so good. He's on leash now, he's getting used to that and he was extremely used to people walking by him all the time. So it was nothing for him to be in this parking lot plaza on the sidewalk, seeing people go around us with masks on and people with canes and shopping carts ricketing, making noises. So uh, my work is paying off already and I gotta keep doing this right now but also socially distancing. So I feel your pain guys if you have a puppy right now and you're trying to do the socialization thing it will get better things are gonna get better very soon I'm confident of that uh, and uh, you know we'll just have to do what we can during this time and you know he's gonna live uh, many years so we'll have lots of time to work on things like bite inhibition and further socialization um, but for now we just have to stay safe for everyone's health. It's a little bit short for uh, me to get in the frame but here he is very cute. So why did I get a dog or decide to get a dog? Well, I didn't decide to get one in COVID. This was not the plan. Uh, I've been talking to his breeder since the fall and uh, he was born February the 20th. So we were talking in uh, January. I found out that I could, uh, um, that I was on the list that uh, I could have one of the puppies in the litter. So uh, I was sort of shocked, a little bit disappointed. You know, I'm wondering what the heck am I gonna do now this whole COVID situation, but it worked out. He's my little guy. Um, I decided to get a dog because, uh, you know, hiking in the woods, I was getting a little bit more insecure. Um, you know, sometimes being by myself and stuff like that, I just didn't want to uh, run into a situation. I'd love to have a dog around just for company as well as protection. For those of you guys that uh, don't know this breed very well, uh, the Bouvier uh, is sort of a rare breed. You don't really see a lot of them around. Um, they originated uh, in Belgium, in an uh, area like Flanders, basically. Home Flanders Fields, you know exactly uh, where that region is in that area by Holland and things like that. So um, they originated there. They were a, traditionally a farm dog and they still are a farm dog. Um, they're used to work cattle, herd, they're very, very, very strong herding instincts, strong prey drive. Um, and uh, they, of course, protect the farm. And they were also um, really important in taking, you know, things to market for farmers. So you guys can, you know, you can uh, leash these guys up to a harness and they can pull a cart to market and they guard the, uh, you know, like the, the milk that was in the cart and the carts basically back in the day. Nice kisses, good boy, I'm teaching him kisses. Uh, so very good all around outdoor dog. Uh, he loves being outside, even in the pouring rain uh, this week when I brought him home, it was pouring rain, high wind. He was bomb proof, he loved it. So we put him down. So uh, basically, uh, I just got him because I want to feel a bit safer in the woods and have a buddy to hike around. Plans for him, I want to train him to scent for mushrooms, of course, uh, for, you know, chanterelles, morels, uh, lobster mushrooms, all the good stuff. So he's really good uh, at uh, sniffing things out. Obviously, at this age, you can find a little kibble that I dropped on the front grass first thing in the morning. So what is our routine like right now? Well, everyone's routine is a little bit disrupted because of the COVID situation, especially socialization. So uh, what we do for our day is we get up in the morning. Uh, for example, I'll start, maybe I'll start midnight um, of a day. So how it works is that uh, he usually whimpers to get me up uh, in the night, usually around two o'clock in the morning so far. And right now he is crated uh, in what we call an exercise pen. An exercise pen has 15 square feet. He's got a poofy little bed in there, his water dish um, and food. Although the food and water, they are not in there overnight. Uh, I don't want him to pee overnight. Uh, there's also a bit of paper in there so that if, he, if I sleep through his little uh, wake up call, then he can use the toilet, no problem. So far, he's only messed the bed in the week that I've had him one time and it was on the paper because I was so tired when I got back that he basically got up the night and used the washroom. And then of course at 5.30 in the morning, he barked to get me up. 
So yes, two in the morning is when he barks to get me up. I take him outside in the pitch dark. Uh, I don't initiate playtime or anything like that. I make sure he toilets really quickly. I use code words to do that. He toilets fast. I bring him back inside. Then I put him back in his exercise pen. He falls back asleep again. I go back to sleep again. And at 5.30 in the morning-ish, uh, he will bark again to let me know he's gotta go. And he's sitting by his crate door. Basically, I make sure he sits before he gets out to get leashed up. I want him to learn manners. So he always sits before he comes in the house and sits for his leash to get removed and he sits inside the exercise pen to be let out. I don't let a dog jump up and down and have no manners. I don't like that. So after the 5.30 in the morning wake call, well, unfortunately, I'm up and he is up. What we do next is, I, uh, he's pretty sleepy, so I don't uh, do anything too high energy, but sometimes he likes to get his chew on. I've got lots of different toys for his stimulation, raw hides, soft chewies, balls. So he sits on his mat and he sort of gets a little bit of enrichment playtime. It's pretty quiet playtime. Sometimes I'll throw the Kong a few times. But really cute thing is that he fetches. So I just want to show you a little video clip here. Uh, his One of his relative dogs fetches and the breeder told me you might want to see if he can do it. Within a day, he was quick, quick, quick. I threw a ball, he brought it back to me three times and he's never stopped doing it since. This is a great thing guys to tucker them out is doing a fetch. As long as you don't throw it too far, make them run too fast. You know, his bones are growing. I don't want to have a sports injury at this age. So I just throw it a short distance and a few times and he has lots of fun with that. So we do that and then sometimes we do a little bit of wrestling where I work on his bite inhibition. If he's too nippy with me, I yelp and uh, he gets the point. I'm never harsh with him. This is a breed you cannot be harsh with. You have to be fair and they will call you on it if you're not being fair. So I'm very calm with him and I, I just make a yelping noise if he bites me too hard. He's allowed to gum me and mouth me but not bite hard. If he gets too harsh and he won't listen to me then he gets one of his toys put in his mouth and he quite often goes off and chews it again for a while. But uh, he's not called uh, by nickname T-Rex for no reason. He likes to bite and pinch. Um, but he's actually not bad. You know, my arms here, I, they're really not, um, not scratched up at all. Um, I can't show you because I can't pull the shirt up, but there's a little tiny pinch right here. Sometimes he likes to do the hurting thing where he jumps up and kind of nips a little bit. Uh, we're working on that because I don't really like that, especially now that I'm wearing shorts. It's such a nice day out. So after we've played for a little while, quite often dogs will have to go to the washroom. I'll take him back outside again and see if he has to go. Sometimes he'll have his morning um, bowel movement at that point in time. Sometimes he'll have it after his breakfast, which is what I do next. He usually gets his breakfast. And then after the breakfast, um, we kind of just sit quietly and play with some toys. And then what'll happen is I'll take him out maybe an hour, half an hour to an hour after eating. And then he'll usually toilet after that. And then uh, basically I have to go to work. So he goes back in his uh, confinement area. He has a short-term and a long-term confinement area. The short-term confinement area is a crate uh, in an office. And uh, since one of us is working from home right now, he hangs out for most of the day and he usually sleeps or plays with his toys till around lunchtime. Then he's taken outside again to go to the bathroom, a little bit of playtime, and then back in the sort of short-term confinement for a couple hours until I get home from work myself. And then the afternoon, I run him a little bit ragged. We definitely do a lot of training and we have a lot of um, more intense exercise in the afternoon. Um, I take him outside to the bathroom, obviously, before we do that. And then we'll play fetch. Right now, we're learning uh, about how to heal. Uh, he already came knowing how to sit, so he knows that. We go through that and we work on manners that if he comes up to me, he sits down. So after his afternoon of training and hanging out outside, which he absolutely loves to do, he goes down for a nap for about an hour and a half, which is fine. You know, he's pretty tired. He's a growing puppy. Uh, you know, he's 14 pounds about two weeks ago. Now he's 16. So he's, uh, you know, he's got a lot of growing to do and he's learning. And, you know, a lot of this mental stimulation and physical stimulation exhausts him. And so he does need time to recharge like all of us. So he's relaxing. And then uh, we have supper after that. And then... We go outside, do a little bit more playtime, and closer to bedtime, what I do is I like to have him settle down on his mat and play with his toys quietly, and we'll kind of cuddle together. We sit and have dinner ourselves. He's not allowed to interact with us. He just sits quietly under the table. Bedtime is around 10.30, and he's pretty sacked out at that point. And uh, then, like I said, the cycle begins again when he wakes me up in the night to go to the bathroom. I'm doing the noise desensitization. He gets, you know, a few hours of cartoons a day played into his exercise pen when he's resting. Uh, I'm also doing some things outside, opening umbrellas, moving the broom around. I've turned the vacuum on. You know, I'm gonna show him paper bags blowing in the wind or plastic bags rather. Um, the other day, one of my lawn chairs blew over in front of him in high wind and he didn't react at all. 
So really important, another thing we can do during COVID to socialize the puppies uh, is to kind of get them used to just daily life. You know, sometimes we drop a pan or a pot in the kitchen or a cup, something breaks. Uh, we don't want them to go bah, and like panic and rush off. So his X pen is in the kitchen uh, area, just off to the side. So he hears a lot of our daily life and a lot of our noises. I also play uh, woodland noises for him. So birds and waterfalls and things like that. Cause I wanted to get used to those kind of things in the forest and trees falling. Great resource on YouTube, guys. Just go on there. Um, you know, you, all the cartoons are on there. You can stream them for free. You can stream uh, all kinds of noises like thunderstorms and dogs barking and people yelling and put on CNN or like, you know, I don't know, whatever you want to put on so you can get used to different voices and stuff. So he definitely adores water already. I want to show you guys an adorable clip of him yesterday discovering water for the first time other than his water bowl. Um, it was in on the deck, actually. I had left a boot tray out in the rain. Rainwater got in there found it and uh, let's just see what happened. Gosh, I love the joy that you see in puppies. It's really cheering me up during these really difficult times right now where I'm confined home except to go out for work. So uh, it's really great to have this little guy to uh, enjoy my day with and I'm really excited to see how he's going to grow up. We'll get into the woods really soon. Um, I want to get another shot into him for going a little bit deeper in there because of course wolves and coyotes and foxes uh, they have a lot of parasites and a lot of yucky stuff so uh, I just want to make sure like he's vulnerable to some of the diseases that those animals carry because he's a dog himself so I don't want him to catch something like parvovirus from a uh, coyote or something like that so we're gonna be really careful I'm gonna have to do a little bit of foraging myself without him. I want to get him used to lots of different smells right now. I'll be bringing home things I forage like dryad saddles and morels. Uh, and I'm gonna be you know, putting them in a safe little Tupperware container, drilling holes in the top so he can scent them and smell them and get that smell in his brain now while he's young. So uh, don't worry guys, we'll get out in the woods with him soon, but I just want to keep him really safe and I want to keep us safe as well. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I look forward to uh, your comments below and any questions you may have about Royce and his breed or anything you wanna know, leave it down below in the comments. I hope you guys have a wonderful week as always. Take care.